Hi there, it's Gabriel here from pilotclimb.com and in today's video we're going to talk about the difference between IFR and VFR. So without further delay, let's jump into it. Alright, as you can see here from this picture, we've got the difference between visual flight and instrument flight. As you can see already, is uh, the, the biggest difference is that the visual flight, you've got good weather around, while in the instrument flight, you've got a low visibility around. So the difference between these two is uh, that the pilots on the visual flight, following the VFR, visual flight rules, will, uh, choose, will take the references looking outside. So looking at the grounds, looking at the cities, and so on. The instrument flight or IFR, the pilots will look at the instrumentation for navigation purposes. It is paramount to understand, first of all, that not every pilot can fly EFR and not every aircraft is certified to fly IFR. That means that in order to fly under the instrument meteorological conditions or into when we, you don't have a good visibility, you need to be um, certified to do that and the aircraft as well needs to be certified. All right, so let's move on. Why it is important uh, to know when to fly e VFR or IFR? Because if, if the visibility is not great, you have to trust your instrumentation. That's extremely important. Let me show you why. So as you can see here in this picture, you see that the airplane, when it's inside a cloud or in conditions low visibility, that pilot doesn't have any reference from uh, the outside uh, terrain. So what will happen is that the pilot, when is actually turning, like in this case, he doesn't have any feelings at all because he doesn't have any outside references. This is extremely important because you cannot base your uh, uh, feelings onto this uh, uh, looking outside. The feeling that the pilot has is that the aircraft is completely stopped and that's why he has to follow the instrumentation. So if you compare this to the visual flight rules or VFR, where the pilot can actually look outside, we will see the example in a second. So as you can see, there is no reference from outside because you are inside the clouds. But, like for example, as you can see in here, the aircraft is climbing, you see, you've got the because the vertical speed is increasing, everything is moving outside, but the pilot from inside cannot see anything. So the, the pilot has the feeling that is stopped. But with the FR, you have the feeling of the terrain moving, as you can see here. So the pilot has straight away the feeling that the aircraft is moving and the senses of the pilot are uh, in line with the, with the instrumentation, with the aircraft, what it's doing. The problem with the IFR when you're inside a cloud is that you don't see this. During that time, you don't see the horizon, you don't see the things moving. So most of the time when you are in IFR situation, your feelings are completely different compared to what the instrumentation are, are telling you. And it's paramount that you actually trust your, your instrumentation. When I started my career and I was doing the training, the instrumental uh, training, I had the feeling many times that I was going straight, and the, uh, but the aircraft was actually turning or vice versa. I had the feeling that I was turning and the aircraft was actually going straight. So that is when you learn to trust your instrumentation. So I hope the difference is clear and let's move on. When do we know that we can fly VFR and when do we know that we have to fly IFR? The, the line between the VFR and IFR are called visual, visual meteorological conditions. Or what I mean by that is that when we have visual meteorological condition, we can fly VFR and IFR. Or, or what I mean by that is that we can, with visual meteorological condition, you can fly looking outside, but also if you are certified and the aircraft is certified, you can fly looking inside, trusting an instrumentation. We have to make sure that we know that even though you're flying IFR and the, there is a good weather outside, it's paramount that you still look outside for the terrain and traffic and so on. Because flying IFR in a clear day doesn't mean that you cannot look outside. It's very important, especially, like for example, in summertime, you're flying IFR for navigation purposes, so you're looking inside for navigation purposes, but you're still looking outside to check where the uh, cumulonimbus are, where the terrain is, or, for example, if you're flying in a VFR traf in high-intensity VFR traffic area, you want to look outside to spot other planes you know, and avoid them, even though you're still flying IFR, so looking inside for the navigation purposes. When you don't have the visual meteorological conditions like this table that now we're going to analyze, you have to fly IFR in IMC or instrument meteorological condition and that, uh, and that day you don't look outside because you really cannot see anything as the example that we did before. 
So if you analyze the table of visual meteorological conditions, is this this basically the condition that allow the VFR to fly around? I've divided this table into the categories. Okay, so we've got the airspace category Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Fossil, and Golf. So in the airspace category Alpha, the VFR traffic are not allowed. So there is no reason to talk about VMC on the airspace Bravo. However, if the VFR is flying above flat level 100, okay, above this black line here, you can see that in order to maintain the VMC and flying VFR, we need to have eight kilometers visibility minimum and be clear of clouds. Below flat level 100, what we've got in here is that we need to have five kilometers visibility and being clear of clouds, okay? So, as you can see, it's the same, but the difference is three kilometers of visibility. On the airspace category, Charlie, Delta, Echo, and Foxtrot, if you are above flat level 100, we need eight kilometers of visibility minimum, vertical separation from the cloud of 1,000 feet, and we've got 1,500 meters of horizontal separation from the clouds. So we have to have this condition in order to maintain the visual meteorological conditions and be allowed to fly VFR. If these conditions are not met by for any reason, that means that we cannot fly VFR, and we have two, uh, two options, basically. One is to ask for IFR uh, flights. During the flight, you can do that, but if you are not certified to fly IFR, you cannot do that. So either you come back or you descend or climb in order to maintain this separation and have this visibility. Below flat level 100, we've got pretty much the same conditions. What I mean is 1,000 feet of vertical separation from the cloud, 1,500 meters of horizontal separation, and the visibility that is required in order to maintain the VMC of visual meteorological conditions are 5 kilometers mean. <clears throat> On the airspace category Golf, when we are at or below 3,000 feet above mean sea level or 1,000 feet above terrain, whichever of these two is higher, we need to have 5 kilometers minimum visibility, being clear of clouds and be inside with the terrain at all times. So these are the conditions that allow the pilots to fly in VFR. If these conditions are not uh, met, so let's say, for example, in here, instead of having five kilometers visibility minimum, that they've got three kilometers visibility, that means that the VMC are not met, and that means that the pilot has to fly IFR. If he's not certified to fly IFR, that day the VFR, the VFR pilot has to stay on the ground. I'm very sorry about that. So now that it's clear what the visibility meteorological conditions are and why are important, it's important to make a clear dis the discussion, the distinction between VMC and VFR. During my career, I've been flying for more than 15 years, I've been a professional pilot for more than 10 years, and I've been involved in training for more than 13 years. So during this time, I've seen that many people this still confuse what is VFR with VMC. Is there are completely different things. The VFR are rules that a pilot that flying visually has to follow and the VMC are the conditions, the meteorological conditions that we have to have in order to fly under the VFR, under the visual flight rules. The IMC and IFR is the same thing. IMC is a condition, meteorological condition that we have when we have to fly under the IFR, under the instrumental flight rules. So I hope this is clear so we can move on. So on the next slide we see what sort of pilot normally flies VFR and what sort of pilot normally flies IFR? A VFR pilot is a flight, is a pilot, private pilot normally that flies over the weekends when it's good weather to enjoy as a for for recreational purposes. However, we've got as well VFR pilots like I've been doing. I don't know, uh, 14 years ago, 13 years ago, I've been flying for the skydivers. So I was uh, dropping them off, climbing, descend every day, 10, 15 times. And that was VFR traffic. I was flying VFR even though I was working. However, when we're talking about the commercial air transport uh, pilot, or like I am now, I'm a captain of the Boeing 737 flying for a nightline, I'm flying all the time IFR. Even though the visibility outside is great, I still fly IFR. The reason why I'm flying IFR, even when the visibility is great, is because IFR is a very structured way of flying, okay? So every pilot knows exactly where I have to go, where, what, the route, uh, what the route looks like, when to turn and so on. And so the controller has a clear idea and a better control over the traffics because you can imagine all the airliners, all the jets of the airlines that are a lot of, out of there uh, in this DNA age, 
what happens if everybody flies visually, looking outside and flying pretty much where we want, you can understand it will be a bit difficult for the controller to control these fast moving airplanes. That's why the uh, airlines they fly IFR or uh, looking at the instrumentation for navigation purposes, even when the visibility is great. We can still do some uh, visual part of our IFR flight, for example, when there is a clear day, there is no traffic around, sometimes the air traffic controller clear us as an airline pilot to perform a visual approach. And basically, from very close to the, to the airport, we do a visual maneuver and land like a private pilot would do in a normal uh, weekend flying, okay? So I hope this is clear and we can move on. So here, I want to make sure that it's clear what's the difference between a VFR route that is on the left here and IFR route which is on the right here. As you can see, this is the airport. This actually is the same airport, okay? But this is a, a VFR chart and this is an IFR Jepson chart, okay? So what is important to understand is that imagine you are a VFR pilot and wants to train for VFR and you want to go east, for example. So, as you can see, this is the E point, the east point, okay? These are points that normally the VFR pilots have to comply with. So, if you want to take off from here and go over here, you need to, or basically flying somewhere, somewhere else east, you have to go over the east point and then fly there. It's, they are like gates that you have to open and get out of the airspace, or you have to open and get in of the airspace. Let's say you're flying from here, then you arrive over east, and then you approach the airport. But how do you, go, do you get there? It's pretty much up to you. You should go there in the most direct way, but nobody tells you that uh, you have to turn exactly here or there. Normally the pilot take off and then he, he make his way there on their VFR. The same applies if you, want to, if you want to go to southeast or southwest or northwest. As you can see here, the cities are very well depicted, the mountains are very well depicted, the lakes are very well depicted because the pilot takes as a reference the, the ground that is below him, okay? In the other sense, the IFR, IFR pilots, they have to fly IFR routes. For example, for the departure, they're called SEEDs, Standard Instrument Departure. If you don't know what SEEDs are and you want to know more, I've made a separate video where I explain step by step what they are and how to read a chart about that. But for the purpose of this video, what we're going to see is that this in, in, uh, IFR pilots wants to take off from the uh, airport, he, he cannot go east as he wants. For example, take off like that and then fly like that and arrive in this point that is east of the airport. He has to fly these specific routes that are very well uh, defined and were very well uh, known by the pilot. What will happen is instead of taking off at the right, he will take off, for example, in this case, fly over this, st this ground station here, okay, the, this ADF or locator, then it's a right turn and we've got the maximum speed as well to intercept and follow the 285 outbound bound back so that is the east point, okay, to go east from the airport. As you can see, you cannot fly like that. And that's why it's important to know the difference between IFR and VFR. And if you want to fly FR again, you need to go to a school, get a certification, the aircraft has to be certified, and so on. I hope this uh, VFR, IFR different explanation is clear for you. If you have any questions, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel, and go to pilotcam.com and check the website where you can subscribe for free pilot training uh, content. Also, let me know whenever was your last SID that you fly or where you fly last time as a VFR pilot. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one.